So after those introductions, uh, just a few words about the Meta. I think most of you have been practicing Meta with me or probably on your own already for some time. If you are completely new, then um, I guess just one little point is that Meta practice certainly does have the characteristic of happiness, warmth, a uh, feeling of maybe fuzziness, goodwill, lightness, softness when it develops. But that is not the sign of metta in and of itself. The sign of metta really is opening our hearts, opening our um, unconditional acceptance towards whatever is arising with an attitude of loving kindness. That means an attitude of unconditional awareness, unconditional acceptance, no matter what arises. So even if you feel anything but what you would label as metta, that is perfectly fine. Metta includes it all. So metta is like the sun that shines on all beings impartially, but also it shines on our own inner world impartially too. So it helps us to hold whatever it is that's arising with a feeling of kindness, a feeling of gentleness and care, and also respect. Because sometimes there are certain emotions that we think are valuable or acceptable and other emotions that we stigmatize and loving kindness helps us to respect everything just as it is as a matter of nature you know cause and effect whatever's arising arises due to causes and what we can do with the results of those causes is not create more unskillful reaction or karma towards them we can learn to have that sense of friendliness and kindness towards whatever is arising right now and that in and of itself starts to transform our experience it starts in the mind the mind comes first the mind is the creator of this whole world that we experience through the six sense doors and so we have some influence on how we relate to that six sense world and in there you can put your loving kindness your kindness your um, sense of friendship to whatever comes up. So even though these uh, invitations, suggestions, guidances are um, just that really, I mean, they're suggestions and you can follow along, please don't feel you have to stick with it if it's not working for you. Sometimes uh, metta can be just a sense of kindfulness, kindness and mindfulness towards whatever's arising. So I will probably guide us in some loving kindness towards a dear person. Now, that doesn't mean the closest person to you in your life necessarily, because sometimes that closest person can be also a relationship that's a little bit complicated or even fraught from time to time. We know the other person's faults. We also know how those faults can trigger us <laughs> or those perceived faults can trigger us. And so there may also be a lot of stories, a lot of... Uh, uh memories arising with a person very close um so i usually take a person that's a couple of steps back maybe a sort of semi close person or like a friend but not a best friend actually my best friend and i have a very very clear and simple relationship so it's quite easy to work with her but uh perhaps not a partner or a parent necessarily it depends on your relationship with that person so choose somebody who you get a sense of gladness to bring to mind so, for example, thinking about that best friend, I just have a smile, you know, because I'm so grateful for such a pure relationship. Um, but, yeah, I have also sent Meta to a love person for a full week or two weeks, two whole weeks, actually, who was not that close to me. But I felt a sense of gratitude towards because they'd actually um, sponsored the retreat I was on and practicing loving kindness. So gratitude is also a way to uh, easily rouse that loving kindness to a person. So maybe you'd like to decide on someone right now and um, just recognizing that meta works in extraordinary ways, unpredictable ways. Sometimes the person you think is going to engender loving kindness or is it going to be easy to keep in mind isn't. And it's not because you don't have meta for them. It's just a bit mysterious. So maybe have a second person that you can bring in if that's the case. Um, for me, sometimes that's a teacher or someone who I know is going to engender that feeling quite easily. So that is the uh, preamble. And again, it's a suggestion. So if your mind just doesn't want to go there today, that's perfectly fine. You can just uh, 
continue to be kind to yourself, whatever's arising in your mind. Okay, so let's begin. We'll sit for about 40, 45 minutes and we'll have some time for any feedback, any questions, any uh, practice discussion, whatever comes up. And for now, just gently close your eyes when you're ready and settle into your body. Noticing the temperature in the room, adjusting yourself, perhaps removing or adding a blanket to keep you cozy, adding a beanie. <laughs> you usually don't see me without my beanie. And adjusting any clothing that may be tight or uncomfortable. Adjusting your cushion if need be, your limbs, really sensing into your body and giving your body that sense that it's cared for, it's respected. You're not about to push your body around. And just beginning the meditation, as I usually like to do, by gently allowing your awareness imbued with a sense of friendship, warmth, curiosity perhaps, to just soak through your body. I usually start at the top of my head. And just allow it to soak through, illuminating any sensations you experience on the scalp area. And along with that awareness, you allow your kindness to flow. Perhaps that kindness manifests simply by giving whatever's arising space. Just as you'd give space to a friend who'd come into your room, into your home. Imagine your body now as a friend that you're welcoming. really tending to. Noticing your forehead, your eyes, any tension in the brow. Just seeing what kind of attention is needed to soften it. Allowing the cheeks and the jaw to relax. Noticing any sensations. Your ears, your neck, your throat. And perhaps spending a little time on your shoulders, areas that tend to get tightened up. Perhaps rolling your shoulders back a little bit and allowing them to find their own place. Allowing this kindful awareness to soak through your shoulders as though you're absorbing 
the rays of the morning sun. Right down through your arms, your elbows, hands, fingers. All the way down to each fingertip. Giving each fingertip your full attention, your loving care. And noticing any sensations that arise. Moving down through your chest, allowing this kindfulness to soak right through your torso as far as it will and just noticing any sensations, whether pleasant or unpleasant imbuing them with that same sense of kindness, respect, and care. Allowing things to settle in their own time. Just holding a loving, friendly space. And noticing your entire back area. And so your whole back, we're now bathing in the early morning sun. your belly, your abdomen, right down to your hips, your buttocks. Exploring all the different sensations, just allowing them to be. Down through your legs, thighs, knees. Down your shins and calves. Right down to your heels, soles and toes. Until the whole leg area from your hips, your buttocks, down through your thighs, right down to the tips of your toes, are soaked through with kindfulness, allowing them to deeply relax. And bring you more and more fully, more and more deeply, into this present moment, embodied, grounded, and at ease. And perhaps just taking time to sense into your whole body. And give a little more attention to any area that is still feeling tight or tense. Maybe an ache in your head or 
tension in the eyes, maybe a fluttering in the belly. Giving those sensations all your kindness and care. just allowing them to be held in this field of loving kindness, acceptance, warmth. Wishing your whole body Ease, health, peace, regarding your body as a friend. And noticing how the body responds. Any pleasant, tingling sensations that may arise. And staying connected to that sense of ease, however mild, subtle, indistinct, just bringing to mind now this dear person, the loved person or the friend, as though they were also sitting close by and you were regarding them with the same friendliness you've extended to your own body and mind. You might get a sense of their image in your mind or maybe a sense of how it feels to be with them. Perhaps you remember a time that they were happy, relaxed. Maybe you can sense their qualities. Those things about them that you really respect. And gently start extending wishes of loving kindness towards them. Perhaps simply by the way you regard them allowing your own happiness and well-being to spread to them, or maybe by the use of words, phrases, to capture your wishes for them. And see if you can adapt them to suit this person, perhaps what they wish for themselves. Phrases such as, may you be happy. May you be safe. May you be healthy.
May you be at peace. Whatever resonates for you right now. Just quietly, clearly repeating these phrases and listening in that space between each phrase to allow the mind to incline towards the meaning of loving kindness that you feel in your heart. So just continuing in this way, offering each phrase as a beautiful gift to this person who's right before you, noticing their face light up, their body relax, and staying connected to any feelings, perhaps in your heart area or anywhere on your body. as the mind starts to incline towards the experience of loving kindness, however it manifests for you. Just sensing into that balance between repeating the phrases as an anchor, as a signpost for the mind, and that space between each phrase where you listen in with your whole body and mind before gently planting the next phrase. Carefully and attentively connecting to the meaning, the beauty of these intentions of loving kindness.
And if at any time your mind wanders or disengages or the phrases become mere words, just refreshing the image of this person in your mind or maybe another loved person, bringing them up again in your mind. Perhaps their a sense of their energy, their presence, their qualities. Connecting once again to your deepest wish for them. And being happy to just offer loving kindness without expecting anything in return, not even a particular experience of loving kindness. Just happy to do the work. Now I'd like to invite you to gently bid farewell to the loved person if you're working with them. And just sense in again to any feelings of well-being or ease. Or maybe just the good intentions you've been cultivating now. And spread this sense of well-being or goodwill 
all the people in this room, your own room if you're here at the monastery, or this virtual Zoom room that spreads throughout the world, from Australia to Singapore, over Europe, Poland, Netherlands, Germany, UK, across to Canada, as though golden rays of loving kindness were connecting us throughout this world, bringing warmth, hope, goodwill to all those beings in our own countries and beyond. It's as though each of us has this beautiful golden glow like little or maybe large candle flames. And those flames start spreading, flickering, connecting us with each other, warming up the hearts of all those beings in between. Beings who are struggling right now, maybe unsafe, without food. Beings who are well, safe, enjoying life. Our goodwill extends to all. Spreading this beautiful golden glow throughout the world. Perhaps shining more brightly on those places where there's great conflict, war. May all beings be free from danger, free from pain. May they live in harmony. May they live in peace. All human beings, all animals, insects and birds, all beings who live in water, frogs, tadpoles, fish and octopus, Those in the sea is huge animals like whales. And the tiniest little animals. Little one-celled beings, wherever life exists, may all beings be safe. May all beings have enough to eat. May they be happy, may they be at peace. All invisible beings, beings we may not see, but sometimes we can sense. Heavenly beings, or those beings in the lower worlds, lost and confused. May all beings, whoever they are, wherever life is found. May all beings be safe. 
Be happy. Be at ease. So our loving kindness spreads to create this beautiful container for all of life. Protecting, soothing, softening, all pain through the power of loving kindness. So keeping this perception of all beings, boundless metta, whilst also sensing into your body once again. I'm going to chant blessings of loving kindness to all beings to end this meditation. Sabe Sato Sabe Pana Sabe Buddha Sabe Pugala Sabe Atabala Sabaitiho Sabe Purisa Sabe Aria Sabe Anaria Sabe Dewa Sabe Manusa Sabe Wini Parika Awe Raho Tu Abya Pacha Raho Tu Ani Gaho Tu Sukiatanam Bhagiyamutu Dukha Munjatsu Yadalada Sampatito Mawe Gachamutu Kamasaka Sadhu, Sadhu, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your practice. It's very nice to practice with all of you. I'm sure the energy in our room is not only from us four, but it's very nice energy. And I think you've contributed. So you've all been to the monastery in that sense. <laughs> and shared your lovely energy. So <clears throat> even if you don't think your energy is lovely, it's certainly a, a room full of good intentions. So thank you for being here. And are there any questions or feedback or anything you'd like to say, either by raising your hand and speaking? Uh, or by typing in the chat you're very welcome it's nice to uh, know how that landed and um, if there were any uh, anything really that you'd like to say especially anything you'd like to clarify it would be very welcome <laughs> obviously you're all very peaceful Thank you. Well needed this morning. I feel much calmer and happier now, but I have to go. Sorry. Meta to everyone here. No worries. Don't apologize. It's lovely to have you. See you soon. <laughs>
Yeah. Anything from here? More rested. More rested. <laughs> a little what? A little nap. <laughs> yeah, Meta can relax as well. <laughs> yeah, good. Me too. Except at about 22, I thought, gosh, there's still a lot of time. Then I was like, whoops, I usually spread Meta to all beings. I was getting into the meta to the love person, could have carried on. <laughs> yeah, it's a very short session, but you know you can extend or shorten it at your own uh, leisure, however is appropriate for you in your own time. And it's nice to remember that uh, it doesn't take long, actually, to generate a little bit of goodwill. So even if we just have a few thoughts throughout the day of loving kindness towards ourselves or others, it can really cut through some unhelpful, unskillful habit patterns. You know, how we can get into negative thought. Sometimes you think, yeah, I still feel negative. What's the point of having a thought of loving kindness? But there's a point because it's inclining the mind differently. And uh, this is what's meant by right effort. Uh, thanks for your comments. Thanks for a lovely meta session. Feeling blissful, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful as long as it lasts <laughs> thanks very much for your leading i had a very good meditation <laughs> i felt calm and grounded very grounded loving kindness thank you very much for everyone here for emitting good energies you see it can be felt it's amazing it can be felt even in australia although most of us are not in australia but still it reaches there so yeah yeah, it's important to keep that loving kindness grounded. And I think, you know, to keep it in the body to some extent. The body will fade on its own when it's time for the body to fade and the feeling will become predominant. But at least to begin um, with really feeling it in the body is quite important in meta practice. Thank you so, so much. It was heartwarming and freeing. It was very emotional for me. Feels so much clearer now. Great. Yeah, it, there's a certain power to loving kindness. I was teaching a retreat a week long in America, which was very notable for me because when people work for a whole week, a lot of uh, emotions have a chance to clear. And, um, you know, it's a process. They go through all kinds of obstacles to the loving kindness too. And uh, whenever that there's a release, there can be a sense of... Um, tears sometimes it's like something's melting something's softening so yeah it can feel quite um quite profound yeah good melanie would like to speak great it's nice to hear people's voices hi melanie hi venerable thank you very much um i had a question because i noticed today that when you were spreading meta to all the people uh, in war zones or suffering from hunger or whatever. Uh, my mind didn't want to go there mm. because it was, uh, I felt like it was bringing me too much negativity. Yeah. So I just stepped back and thought about people in general, but not in, in mm -hmm. war zones. So I would like to have some of the, uh, some tips about it or how to deal yeah. with that? Yeah, I think you probably practiced quite skillfully. You noticed that your mind was withdrawing and it wasn't ready to go there. So, you know, this is a very quick session. So, you know, it's just it's just a suggestion to remind us of those people and not to exclude and also to remind us that there are people who really need loving kindness, but also compassion. So in a sense, by bringing in people who are suffering, the meta it does change in its quality and sometimes it might not be the right time. Um, if it is the right time, there's a lot of resourcefulness, there's a lot of meta, it can change to more of a sense of compassion, you know, if it's able to connect. But again, that would usually take longer. So in a sense, you could see that almost as working with the disliked and it's harder. So that's why we do it at the end. You know, we start with the love person and only then we move to the more difficult situation. So it's just a very nutshell session. And I would say that for this session, that's perfectly fine. You noticed it, you took a step back and, and that's perfectly fine. You might find that, you know, meta comes pouring out or compassion comes 
pouring out at some other time. It's just to remind us that, you know, um, that not all beings are happy right now and that meta eventually when it does develop can spread to all. So, but we go through sequentially and in these groups too, we go through sequentially. So today it was mostly focused on the loved, which means the feelings are more pleasant. And then over time, when we work with a difficult person, you know, bit by bit, we we learn to be able to uh, extend that loving kindness um, to others without getting impacted ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, thanks for noticing that. Thank you. Yeah. And bringing it up because it's difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. And um it's not easy to go there. It's going to impact us unless we're numb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Matthias has written out some comments there. I don't know if Shirley would like. Yes. Yes. I, uh, I yeah. thank you, Matthias. You've put that in very clearly. Uh, just to. Uh, Remind people that uh, generosity is also another beautiful state and gratitude. And we're also grateful for these teachings. And they're all freely given, which is very beautiful. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to support the monastery, uh, Matthias has put the link in. And just particularly to say that standing orders are particularly helpful if you can do that. But one-off payments are also fine. And there are also practical ways of helping. And I think Matthias has put all this in the chat. So there's needed items that can be given uh, and uh, everything's on the website. So I think most of you are familiar with that, but it's just a little reminder and a little expression of appreciation. Thank you very much. I'm just typing in our events page just in case anybody is not aware. And uh, yeah, I can see there's a question as well. I'll, I'll try and get to it, but I'll also allow others to live if they need to. Um, but yeah, in May, there's a couple of one-day retreats, which are on the events page. Then in um, that's with me on the 11th and the 18th, I think. I heard that there's a Zoom quota too for the Oxford one. I think you can join by Zoom if you're not able to be there in person, if your time zone agrees. Uh, and that's on Vedana as the link between a sensing and craving. So it's actually part of the Paticca Samapada. So we'll be looking at how the Buddha talks about that and how we can work with Vedana in a skillful way. And uh, I am thinking to have some kind of busy bee stroke gamma weekend here on the 1st and 2nd of June. So just to put that in people's awareness in case that's a time they could plan to be around. Um, I'm not sure we can offer accommodation. There might be like one or two possibilities to stay overnight. Um, but you could come for one or the other day also and perhaps do a bit of work on the grounds, meet each other, have tea, and we might have a bit of Dhamma discussion too. So it'd be a nice time to invite people to visit. I'm sorry for those who are in Singapore and Australia because I know <laughs> it's a bit far to come, but there'll be other times, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, I think that's everything for me. I'm going to come to this question because I don't like leaving anything out. Uh, but again, please feel free to leave if you need to. Let's have a look. Um, thank you for today's session. I was sending my thoughts to a very old friend of mine who has a rather difficult personality and triggers my nerves from time to time too. So sending Meta to her was also good for my own personal good. Is this still considered unconditional yeah I would say yes I mean as long as we're not looking for a particular outcome in the relationship itself I mean the thing is no loving kindness when we're still um uh not enlightened is going to be absolutely unconditional but we're moving towards it and in this case I mean sending meta is actually more to purify our own mind than to re-establish relationships with others so actually to do it for your own good is skillful like meta is one of the ways of overcoming resentment and it's skillful practice to you know work with our tendency to ill will so yeah absolutely that is uh good whether or not that person is a loved person 
person or whether they're actually more in the category of the difficult person is another thing. So um, if you are able to have some success with that, that's great. I would generally say that when we move towards someone who we know can trigger difficult emotions, it might be good to first resource yourself by sending yourself loving kindness or sending someone who you find really easy loving kindness and then moving on to someone slightly more difficult maybe staying with a difficult person only for a shortish time so that you're not actually re-triggering any negative emotions but that you can have at least some moments of genuine goodwill and uh, you might not necessarily have feelings of overwhelming love coming up that's okay too it's good to work with uh with these things from time to time certainly yeah and this is one of the reasons for going through the categories, you know, to make sure that we don't have hidden resentments. And, you know, sometimes people say, oh, let's just send it in all four directions, the way the Buddha describes. But you can do that and then still not work with all your inner, you know, triggers and resentment. I think you can move to that too soon and you can feel like you have love and kindness to all beings. But when you actually meet a person who you have difficulties with, that comes crashing down. So, yeah, I think it's really skillful to start to, um, apply the teachings of the Buddha to specific situations whenever you feel that's uh, going to be helpful for you. Yeah, well done. Thank you so much. The Worldly Day beckons, feeling inspired, matter to all. Thank you, everyone. And let's unmute ourselves and we can say goodbye. <laughs>